Okay, we're here at ESCA Invite Season 13 Global Finals in Dallas with Kyle Flosik Bendez from Denial Esports. How's it going? It's going good. Just got pretty owned by Nip. Had kind of low expectations going in, but we knew we had nothing to lose. Okay, so uh, obviously a lot of the, a lot of our readers probably aren't that aware of, of your team. So uh, why don't you go over your teammates and explain kind of what their roles are and like what kind of background they came into CSGO from? Uh, Aria is our in-game leader. He comes from Mouse Baz from 1.6, played a couple seasons of Invite with them. I have Kikyo and Soba who played on UMX previously with me the past couple seasons from 1.6. And we have Jay Mitchell who is our author and he comes from a TF2 and a 1.6 background. And we have Kiko, who's more of our like entry fragger, kind of like our most skilled player. And Sobo's like, he's pretty much a, just a role player, sport player. Uh, how did you prepare for this event? Like, what kind of expectations did you come in? Did you come in here with? Because you obviously probably knew they were going to play NIP first. Then I'm not sure if you looked into the brackets who we we're going to face from now on. But like, how well did you prepare, and how did you expect they do coming into here? Okay. We um, we knew we had Nip, like you said, and we knew, once again, just come in, play as best as we can, nothing to lose. And after that, we know we either have Curse or in Faculty. We play Curse a lot online. They it's. Not as much even, they come out on top most of the time, but we know we're pretty evenly matched up against them time to time, especially on certain maps. And in faculty, we've never played them, we've never seen them play, but we know we know they're beatable from other teams talking to us and everything. We know that they haven't done what they want to do in CS as much as us, so we're really ready to come out and play both of them. I feel like we can take both of them. Is there either one that you prefer? Would you, well, who would you rather play I, if you had to choose? I think I want to play in faculty just because we play curse all the time, they know how we play. You planning on going over any, any of their stats, like watching Devil Sin or anything? Yeah, tonight we're going to fight you both teams, Curse and Faculty again, just to try to get it all get it all together once we come in tomorrow, make it a little easier on us than it was today. So, we we'll go back to the NIP match a little bit. Obviously, the score was pretty one-sided, lopsided, but I mean, what do you take away from that match? Because obviously, it was still a good good experience for you guys to get to play against uh, against like, you know, like the world the world's best team, especially because some of your teammates. I mean, you've been to some actual tournaments with some of the world's best teams, but your teammates probably aren't that experienced. Outside of Kiko, none of us have ever played even go on land yet until this weekend. So for next, for the next matches, we're, we're expecting we're expecting to win definitely. We don't want to go out with two losses, but we know anything's possible for us from this point forward. We know we can take. We feel like we're confident, confident, dynamic kind of. They have like that thing on us that they just rape us every time. Everybody else, I feel like we're able to take out some of that. How do you feel about the American team's chances overall? So we've seen Quantic and Curse both actually have pretty good results in Copenhagen games. I'm not sure if you've been watching this game, but Quantic's tied now. I think 1-1 one, one in maps against the ESC. I think they, I think they won the second map by now. Um, how do you feel about the Americans' chances overall? Because you know, Dynamic's going to play uh, very games next, and then the second match is coming on later with Curse and Faculty. I think Quantic has the highest chance of everybody to play well. Then I think Dynamic's they can either get completely raped and come out seventh or eighth, or they can do if they're on point. They can come out five place top three. With us, I'm hoping for a top five finish, top six hopefully, and. I think Quantic though has a chance at all of us. Do you think Americans are finally over that part where they usually just change all the rosters after every ESCA final, or do you think something like that might once again happen after this, like once the dust settles? Yeah, it's gonna happen. And I don't think, not, probably not for Quantic, but for most of the other US teams. Quantic and Curse. For us, it's up in the air, but for Quantic and I mean, for Curse and Dynamic, so you guys change, I noticed you guys changed your sponsor too, right before this line. You were called Netcode Illuminati the whole season, and now you're Denial Esports. So, what, who's Denial Esports, first of all, and where are your sponsors? Okay. Uh, about a week and a half ago, they came to us offering us a sponsorship for next season, and we knew that we needed some financial backing for this upcoming league, so they threw us a couple hundred. They've been very helpful with us, working with us, getting us here and everything, the jerseys, and we're hoping we can build a future with them. Uh, with Netcode, we knew we had like a budget coming into ESA land and we knew we had to do content for them for the Netcode site, but we just, with our schedules, we just weren't able to get the content done for them and we just had to part ways. Alright, well thanks for the interview and good luck tomorrow. Thanks a lot.